Hey guys, it's Ron from Makata USA. I uh, decided to make a video this morning um, that, that shows all the adjustments for the PI and D gains and all the limiters and all those things like that in the, the expert menu of the tail. Um, these also work for the, the main rotor as well, so the, the gains are the, are the same either way. So uh, the explanation of what they do are the same. So um, first of all, let's start off and let's, let's be one thing 100% sure and you're clear about this. You cannot fix a problem electrically that has a mechanical issue. You can't beat physics no matter what. So if your tail is too slow and it doesn't have a tail authority or you have a mechanical setup on the limits of your tail or you have a loose tail, a bad bearing, uh, a tail, um, tail boom braces that are loose that are causing wags, there's a whole bunch of things that can happen in your helicopter that can cause a wag that you're never ever going to be able to fix no matter how many of these gains you play with. It's never going to work. You're just going to be frustrated. So if I advise you, if you're building a new model, and even if it's new, I don't care what it is, if it's used, whatever, always go through and make sure the mechanical part of it's correct. As far as the V-Bar program is set up correctly, and you also have a good mechanical set up on the helicopter, nine times out of 10, you never have to touch any of this stuff. But then there's the guys who run scale machines and stuff like that that also would have to play with these numbers because they don't have a tail that's one off like everything else as far as the, the normal 3D machines. So uh, the first thing, is we go over when the overall gain for whatever the tail is. Whenever you play with the overall gain, that adjusts each individual part of the PI and all that stuff. It adjusts those gains, those individual numbers as well inside the loop. So it basically brings the ratio of all the P, the I, and the Ds up as the as the actual overall gain goes. The P goes up, the I goes up, the oil of the ratio that it needs to be at goes up. So that typically gives you a better tail performance because it's just raising all the other things up to where they need to be. But there's also parts inside of the control loop that you can adjust up and down in order to get different things. And I'm gonna try to explain to you what they do and uh, how they work. So let's start with the eye gain because that's the, the one gain that most, the eye gains and the P gains are the ones people like to play with the most. So the eye gain is the heading hole portion of the control loop. That's the part that controls how hard the tail stays in one position or, or tries to get back to the position or whatever, not get back, but stays in the position that you put it in. If you overdo that, or if the gain is too high, then what's going to happen is the tail is not going to feel natural. It'll kind of fight you. It'll feel like it, you're having to push it one way or the other, and it kind of overdoes it, kind of like I was described to me, like a rubber band. So you do it one way, and it bounces it goes the other way, and it bounces it, and it doesn't feel natural because the eye gain is trying to hold too much. So that's what the, the basic part of what the eye gain is doing and how it works. The P gain is above and beyond the eye gain as far as the top part of the loop. It is actually trying to do a quicker response on how to control things. Like when you have an outside force like the wind or, um, you know, for whatever reason you're doing a move and it takes uh, something away from where the normal tail should be, what the V-bar thinks the tail should be. The P gain is there to try to keep the tail... Uh, and the quicker response is in the same position before the I gain takes over. So whenever you adjust the P gain and you got too much of it, you'll see bounce backs. You'll see quick, like a little oscillation in the tail up and down, excuse me, not up and down, side to side. And no matter what you do, um, the, the, if the P gain is too high, you're not going to get that correct. The tail's just going to wag one way or the other. Lowering the P gain does not necessarily mean it's going to get rid of a wag in a, in a, in a helicopter. Like I said, so if you do lower the P gain and then the tail starts to feel sluggish, it doesn't feel like it's supposed to and it's, and it's, it's kind of holding too much, now the ratio between the P and the I is off and no matter what you do, it's not going to fix the problem. The problem is mechanical at that point. You need to go in and fix what that is. Put everything back to factory num numbers again and then you start playing with the gain to see if the overall gain or you fix the mechanical part of your helicopter to see if that wag goes away. So... And then we're talking about um, the D gain. Uh, the differential is, the way it was explained to me, is that's like the, the bottom part of the loop that also controls the quicker response from before it gets to the I gain. But it's the part that kind of, uh, it works in conjunction with the I gain and allows the tail loop to work together. It's like there's a ratio between the I and the D and the P that when you, let's say it's 50, 40, 30. I'm just making those numbers up. If those numbers are the way they are, then the control loop works smoothly and it keeps everything how it's supposed to work as far as the tail is concerned. It feels natural, it snaps and stops when you want it to stop, and things like that. So if you just go and you, you just start playing with the D gain because, hey, somebody told you, hey, I, I made it for the D gain and it fixed my problem, 
that doesn't mean that a the problem is fixed. It just means they're putting a band aid on something that's 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 not actually fixing. Um, they're putting a band aid on a, on a wound that's not actually fixing the problem. So the limiter and the discharge um, are kind of cool how they work. The the limiter, the eye limiter, is basically allowing the tail to do what it needs to do, but as far as the gains, the P&I, and how the control loop works, but it keeps the helicopter, the, the V-bar, from overdoing the tail to where it starts to damage the tail mechanically. Like, it's it's holding too much, and it just can't, it, the, because there's such a problem, like you got a low a low ratio tail, and you jack all the gains up to try to get it to hold, eventually something mechanical is going to fail, or the servo is going to fail, because it's just working too hard to try to fix a problem that's mechanical in nature. So what the limiter does is it takes it to a certain point. It allows the loop to work to that certain point, and then the eye discharge, which is part of that limiter, will basically let that go, and it allows the tail to get back to a normal functioning position once it's reached the point that it thinks it should be. Let's say you push the stick, and it's supposed to go 90 degrees left, and you stop. Well, once it gets to that stop, the discharge basically lets go of the loop, so it doesn't allow it to keep pushing on the tail and trying to hold that spot right there, and it's overdriving the tail or overdriving the servo which is causing, um, can cause you all kinds of problems like servo failure, you get hot servos, uh, you get tails that blow out, things like that. So the limiter basically is the limit at which it would allow it to, to, to over discharge and the dis, uh, excuse me, to, to hold the tail. And the discharge is what it lets it go. Basically lets everything get back to normal again, to lets the, the normal PI and D gain uh, ratio work so that the uh, tail's not overdriven all the time. So um, now what you have to also um, you got the collective precomp here and the cyclic precomp. Those are basically, um, those aren't games, but those are things that are put in the control loop that basically help um, whenever you make a quick movement. So whenever you make a collective movement and you see sometimes the tail blows out when only on collective is because the precomp, which is the amount, if you move the cyclic stuff, I mean the collective stick up and down, let me see if you can see it on my, my helicopter. You see the tail is kind of wiggling a little bit. I'm just going up and down on the collective, up and down, no no tail at all. But you see that little wiggle on the tail popping? That is showing you, that's the pre-comp, that it's actually adding a little bit of torque against the, the, the rotor so that the tail doesn't start to blow out before the, the gains be able to take over. So that's kind of like a help on the, on the cyclic, excuse me, on the collective. Um, the same thing for cyclic. Whenever you're making a cyclic move and like you're doing TikToks or something like that and the tail starts to not be quite hanging, it's kind of just bouncing back and forth, that may be the cyclic pre-comp. And there's also a ratio between those two. You see this 22 and 8. That's what it comes with factory from the um, uh, from Mikado. So if you adjust the collective pre-comp, let's say you take that to 24, and then you want to take the 20, the cyclic pre-comp up to like 10. You want to take it 2 to 2. Either 2 on one, 2 on the other. That way you keep the basic ratio at least close to where they need to be. Sometimes if you actually do, if you do the math and you figure out, okay, 22 and 8, the percentage is um, 62% or whatever, I'm just making that up, then you want to adjust the other two, like when you make this to 24, take 24, 62% uh, of 24 is 9, okay, so I'm just, like I said, I'm just making that up. The um, Then you would adjust it to 9 in order to keep that ratio around the same thing. Is it absolutely necessary to keep it there? No, it's not. But if it works, then everything is working like it should as far as the pre cops are concerned. Um, stop gains. <coughs> Excuse me. Those are the gains that allow you to, whenever you're doing a pirouette and the helicopter doesn't stop as hard as you want, um, you can increase the, the stop gains, left or right. And um, sometimes you'll get like a bounce back and you see the tail kind of wobble on one way and it wasn't the other way. If it kind of if it didn't do that before and you increase the stop gain and now it's kind of bobbling when it gets to the end, it's not stopping solid and not chattering, then you need to decrease the stop gain in order to make it stop smoothly but stop you know effectively where it needs to be. Uh, and that's left or right. Either way, that's what stop gains and stop stop gains A and B are. The optimizers A and B, those are the when you turn the optimizer loop on inside the the, uh, the V bar, it basically will tune your tail for you. So all this stuff we're talking about. It can be done inside the V-bar, which is really cool. It'll tune your tail for you. You go in, you do some pirouettes, you fly around, and then one day you'll be on one one flight, you'll be flying around and everything will just lock in. Like, oh my God, my tail is awesome. It's perfect. Then you land and you turn off the optimizers and your tail's good to go. So one really cool thing about the V-bar that a lot of people don't realize is that the optimizers are there to actually tune the helicopter for you. It tunes to your flight style. So <clears throat> one thing that people don't realize also is if you leave it on all the time, 
And let's say one day you tearing the sky up and it locks in. Everything's great. Okay, it's awesome. Then you go out one day and let's say you're just putting around doing some hover practice. Well, it doesn't need as much of an aggressive loop that you have when you're doing hard 3D. So it will actually soften your um, your response down. And then next time you go to fly your hard 3D, the tail doesn't feel right again. Well, that's because you never turn the optimizers off and you've been playing chase the tail. The, basically, the V-bar's been tuning every time you fly it. So whenever it locks in to wherever you want it, make sure you turn those off so you never have that problem again. Um, and then you can see the, the tail acceleration and uh, auto optimizers, which is what I have on now because I'm still tuning this helicopter. Um, the tail acceleration and all that stuff is part of the, the loop is how fast it reacts to uh, all the optimizers and things too. So um, hopefully I've explained um, all this stuff. As you can see the expo and the y'all rate. Y'all rate is how fast the pirouettes. The expo is just expo. 50% uh, is default in V-Bar. So that's just whatever you have. Now, if you actually guys are running a radio that's not V-Bar control um, and you have just a Neo, you just make sure you have your Expo on in the Neo and off in the radio or vice versa. You can have either on, just don't have both of them on. So um, if you guys got any questions, hit me up at Mikado USA. Um, you can email me at vstabby.mikadousa.com. I'm on Instagram as laughing still. YouTube is laughing still as well. And, of course, I'm on the forums as Ronald Thomas. So um, hopefully I helped you out and this gives you some explanation. Thanks.